To begin this morning, summer break is almost over and school is right around the corner. And for many parents and students, that means back to school shopping. And with inflation, many are excited about the tax holiday weekend. Illinois' tax holiday is August 5th through the 14th. During the 10-day period, Illinois will reduct the state sales tax on school supplies by 5%. Shoppers will only pay 1.25% plus the local sales tax. And Peoria gas prices continue to fall. Gas Buddy reports prices in the city have fallen 13.3 cents per gallon in the last week, now averaging 4.45 a gallon. Diesel also declining now at 5.27 per gallon. New overnight, the first ship carrying grain out of Ukraine since the beginning of the war has departed off the coast of Odessa. The ship is carrying more than 26,000 tons of corn to Lebanon. The shipment is part of an agreement with Russia. Ukraine accused Russia of blocking the shipment of more than 22 million tons of grain and other agricultural goods. Officials say they hope the movement of grain out of Ukraine will help ease the global food crisis. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has ordered hundreds of thousands still in eastern Ukraine to evacuate their homes. It's the first time Zelensky has made such a direct order. Relentless bombing there continues to kill civilians daily, and the ability to deliver heat and electricity has been destroyed. Meanwhile, Russian rocket strikes killed one of Ukraine's wealthiest men and his wife. Officials say Olesky Vatertursky was deliberately targeted because he's one of the Ukraine's largest farmers who exported grain abroad. 6.51 this morning, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has arrived in Singapore as of this morning. It's the first stop on an Asian tour. She will also visit Malaysia, South Korea and Japan. Her announced itinerary does not include Taiwan, but just the possibility led to tensions with China. Beijing claims Taiwan as its own territory. More so. Back at home, the Peoria County Sheriff's Office is investigating a fight of at least 100 people from over the weekend at the Peoria Speedway. County Sheriff Chris Watkins says it happened at about 10.30 Saturday night. He says deputies were called to the Speedway for a report of about 100 people fighting. But when deputies arrived, they found no one fighting. Watkins says deputies took multiple reports. One included a four-year-old getting punched in the face. The suspect of that incident reportedly fled the scene. Watkins said witnesses gave deputies a picture of the suspect and an investigation is underway. In an update, we're learning more details about a crash in Peoria that sent four people, including a police officer, to the hospital Saturday night. Police say it happened around 8.30 p.m. They say an officer was conducting a traffic stop on a vehicle near the intersection of War Memorial Drive and University Street. Then another vehicle failed to yield, drove over the median, and hit the first vehicle on the shoulder and struck the police officer. Illinois State Police identified the driver of the vehicle as 50-year-old Charles B. Wenry of Peoria. All four people involved were taken to a local hospital. The officer has since been released. State Police are still investigating the crash. Charges are now pending. In a follow-up, a local harm reduction agency in Peoria is bringing awareness to a drug after a social media post stirs up discussion once again. The drug is known as benzodope, a combination of benzodiazepine and an opiate such as heroin or fentanyl. Chris Schaffner, program director of Jolt's Harm Reduction, says over the last couple of months, the tested sample came from the East and Center Bluff. He says the drug has not caused an increase in overdoses, and he can't account for what's actually contributing to overdoses. Benzodiazepine doesn't necessarily cause respiratory depression like an opioid does, so it doesn't necessarily increase the risk of overdose in that sense. What it does is it just makes it more complicated to bring somebody out of an overdose. He says the best protection is to not use it, but in any case, always have Narcan available. In an update on the deadly flooding situation in Kentucky, more than 11,000 homes are still without power, and more than 1,000 people have been rescued since Thursday. Hundreds of people are currently in temporary shelters. Governor Andy Bashir also announced that the death toll has risen again. 28 people have now lost their lives as a result of this flooding, including four children. Developing now, this year's Lollapalooza wrapped up last night in Grant Park in Chicago. But as Mayor Lori Lightfoot announced a short time ago, the festival isn't going anywhere. Lala, all the great work, all the fabulous music, will continue for 10 more years.
Our Chicago sister station WGN TV's Dean Richards was the first to report last week that the city has reached an agreement to keep the festival in Chicago for another decade. Last night, the mayor made that official. Also around Illinois, someone hit the jackpot in the state, holding the only winning ticket in the Mega Millions lottery worth over $1 billion. The Illinois Lottery website says the winning ticket was sold at the Speedy Cafe Speedway gas station in Des Plaines, Illinois. The winning numbers for Friday's Mega Millions drawing were 13, 36, 45, 57, 67, with a Mega Ball of 14. The $1.28 billion prize is for winners who choose the annuity option, paid annually over 29 years. This is the lottery's second largest prize in its 20-year history, and it comes with a cash value option of $742.2 million. Just across state lines in St. Louis, University City is adding extra bulk item collections this week to help flood victims. Some homes near the River de Pere were flooded twice last week. Residents can place damaged property next to the curb. The city has also waived building permit fees for single-family homes for the next 90 days. University City are also adding extra patrols in places where residents were forced to evacuate. Well, the fall season will be approaching soon, which means Tanner's Orchard and Spear is coming back. Today is opening day. The family-owned business is preparing for another fun-filled season. Tanner's is celebrating 75 years of friendly service. The 40 acres include the farm market, corn maze, animal barn, and more. Weekend manager Jill Webster tells us the best part is getting to know the customers every year. All the different people hearing their stories, they tell us all the time, you know, oh, I come here as a kid and how much it's changed and they just can't wait for Tanner's to open and the donuts and the smells and all the good stuff. Doors open today and their season runs through December. Well, in 2020, experts say suicide was the 12th leading cause of deaths in the U.S. Saturday morning, community members gathered at Jubilee College State Park for Whitney's Walk for Life. More than 100 came out Saturday, many of whom have a loved one who died by suicide. Whitney's Walk was established in 2004 and has raised $1.7 million in funds to bring awareness to suicide and mental health. Participants paid $25 for entry. All proceeds will go to the nonprofit organization, the Holt Center for Healthy Living. Volunteer Haley Brown says she walks to stop the stigmatism around mental health conversations.